Hi, I'm Jane Ryan. I work for South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture as a drawing and painting tutor and I'm going to be presenting a few lessons on uh, watercolour techniques. We'll be using watercolours and ink today for this exercise and I'm just going to give you a quick, um, um, show you quickly what materials are going to be you'll need. So watercolours, you'll need either pans or tubes, it doesn't really matter. You're going to need um, two, um, two pots of water, one for cleaning and um, one for painting. If you can remember throughout the exercise just to um, keep cleaning with this one, you'd be amazed at how clear this, this water stays all the way through. You'll also need at the end of the exercise um, some uh, waterproof ink. Now I've got this particular brand, it's pretty inexpensive but it is waterproof and because we're using the watercolours with it, um, you'll, need to, you'll, you'll need to make sure it is waterproof. I also use this, um, it's a bit, like, a bit like a gouache, Dr Martens, for any grievous errors that you make, it's a quite a thick kind of paint and well stirred and that will cover lots and lots of uh, mistake opaque in an opaque way, it's very very handy. In terms of paint brushes, well I'm painting quite small today, um, I'm actually going to be using quite thin brushes, not tiny brushes, got, I've got um, number six round and I've got uh, number five round here, I've got one of these bigger brushes here just in case I want it but I'm actually going to probably just use these two at the end. I'll also be using one of these to, plant, uh, to apply the ink at the end of the painting as well. I've got, I've added this into it and you probably have these at home but in actual fact if you do have a watercolour set like this, this is going to be adequate. This part of the lid and here. Um, an eraser, maybe might need it, doubt it and a pencil to start off with. Um, I'm using a 2B pencil, you don't have to sharpen it, it's actually better if it's a little bit blunter for the under drawing. So today I want to talk you through a few basic watercolour techniques which probably most of you will now recognise. Um, and I want to build up a, a, a lot of colour and a lot of shape and end up with a watercolour drawing with ink on top. So the ink part of it is really at, at the end um, and at the beginning I want to start by showing you an underpainting and how to build up in stages, relatively substantial stages. It is a watercolour painting, it is not, um, it is not a, a traditional realistic painting. We can't do a, a realistic painting like this unless we have about two years to do it. So, as you know, um, quite, I quite often work from resources um, like this to get shape and to get mark making ideas. What you can do is you can go on to Google, Google um, still life flower arrangement, either photographs or old masters paintings. It's better if you don't go, go for a painting that's pretty contemporary. We're not copying the painting. What we're doing is we're looking at it, we're looking at the shapes of it, we're looking at the mark making in it, and we're going to apply colour and, and watercolour techniques to give us an idea of this. So I don't want you to be put off by this being complex. I chose it because it's, it's, it's full of colour and it's full of marks. And by the end of this uh, lesson, you will see how very different the end result is going to be. So, um, put this aside. What we have to do initially is we need to get our idea onto, onto paper. Now, in terms of watercolour paper, two papers. Um, cold press paper it has a slight dimpling in it, which works um, really well for sort of granulation in watercolour, where the pigment separates and can disappear into the little the little dimples on the paper. Um, you can also have um, hot pressed paper which is completely smooth. It's entirely up to you what you have in house. It doesn't it doesn't matter either way. Sometimes if you were using for instance with the ink you use a dip pen, this might be a problem because the dip pen will snag on it, whereas this one won't. I'm however going to go with 
the cold pressed paper which has got a slightly rough surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil, not very sharp, I am going to start looking at this image as if it's shapes. So I, what you don't want to do is look at it and, and say, oh, there's leaves and there's flowers and that's a dahlia and that's a, a daffodil and, and oh, there's eggs at the bottom. Well, for a start, we're taking the eggs out. We do have a pot in here. You can't see the angles to it because I want to keep this image quite organic so that you have the opportunity to um, um, to take your mind away onto, onto shapes that that aren't to do with accuracy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start drawing the outline for this image and you'll see as I draw how very little I am a, a, applying detail to it. I'm literally looking for the bigger shapes and working my way in. Now, and I'm going to be starting up at, up at this area here. Don't worry if your um, work goes off the page, it doesn't matter. We're not looking for a completed finished piece of work. This exercise is entirely, entirely about learning a technique. If at the end of it you have a finished piece of work then that's fantastic. I'm doing this probably a little heavier than I would normally but I, I, I want to make sure that you can picture, you can pick it up on the screen. Um, there's a butterfly at the top of this flower and there's absolutely no way that I'm going to be drawing butterflies in here. And what you're wanting to do all the time is just literally draw in a kind of general shape, not even leaf shapes. If you find yourself drawing what you think is a leaf, then what you're doing is you're drawing the symbol of a leaf, which doesn't look very much like a leaf at all. Now you'll see here this, whatever flower this is, I'm just literally drawing a circle. I'm going to put in a shape here, yellow. Daffodils, so-called daffodils. Beside here, there's another shape. So you can see that one of the reasons I picked this was that there are big circular shapes happening that I'm just going to map out. And the beauty of all of this, from your point of view as a, an artist, is that you can leave out whatever you like. Because first of all, we're not copying it and it's your drawing, it's your painting. So I'm going to get some shapes here. And you, without a doubt, you, you'll probably get to this stage and you'll think, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this, don't want to do this, I want to get, go and get a cup of coffee. Um, but, but persevere. Don't go into lots of detail. You can see I put a few little circles in here. That's just going to be guidelines when I'm, I'm, I'm working over it. Um, the leaves behind, again, um, if you can see there, that's a leaf shape. Yep, that's a symbol of a leaf. Leaves don't do that. They look like that in graphics, but a leaf can look a leaf can look like that. So don't don't judge yourself at what you're what you're drawing. Just try and keep away from the symbols. And again, just outline. If you find that you have run out of space, just remove one of the flowers. I have a few shapes here. This is a probably, I don't know, maybe it's a delphinium. No idea. And then this down here. And what I would say when you are choosing your image, um, then try and avoid angles. Try and avoid the sort of um, angles and pots are an absolute nightmare. So if you're going to do pots, they can be very bland, stuck in the middle of a, a, a drawing of shapes. So try to avoid them. Um, and if you can't, then make sure they're hidden like this one behind lots of lots of flowers. When you're googling, just Google, um, as I said before, just, just Google photo, um, uh, still life floral arrangements. Um, 
you can, you, what a wee hint would be is you could actually do it in black and white if you wanted as well. You could find a black and white image and then just it's easier to get shapes from. But if you can match it to a colour one, that's even better. Okay, so let's, we'll, we'll just stay with that. It's very, very basic. I'll probably go into a little bit more detail showing the techniques for the watercolours, but in actual fact, the simpler the simpler you do it, the simpler and purer the colours are for this exercise, probably the, the more effective it will be at the end. However, I'm going to now um, walk you through the next stage, which is how to apply the watercolour. So we're just going to, again, go over these areas where the, some, the leaves are. You can see I've got a bit of green on the glaze, which, you know, should probably just be clear water, but I, because I know that I'm putting green in. So you can mix your colours, you can mix your colours, you make them interesting. And you can see here, if I do apply um, wet on wet, you can see what happens. Um, you've, I'm putting green into here. If you do add wet on wet and the colours are leading into each other, what to do is um, do a little bit of control with it. Is clean the brush really well, keep it slightly damp and when you're blending, blend from the light areas into the dark areas. This is a really lovely technique as well. So what you want to do is you just keep going, keep putting blocks of colour into this until you've, you've filled it up. The same with um, the pot, which is a sort of kind of orangey, burnt orangey look. I'm trying to keep all the colours nice and fresh because it will make a difference at the end because we're going to be going over it with black ink. So want to remember you don't have to cover every single bit of white paper either and I think I'm good to now I have to go and change the water. Here I'm just using the, the initial glaze and then going back over it just sweeps across. And now we'll change the water. Here you can see that I've, I've um, got a finished part of the stage and I've put in all the different colours in, and all they are are very 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 loose shapes. Um, Bearing in mind that at the end of this, we're going to be putting in the, the kind of lines and the marks with ink. So we don't want to be kind of over-egging the omelette with this. We don't want to be putting too much detail because if we do, it's just going to be a watercolour painting on its own. What you can do though, if you want to continue on with this um, in terms of sort of different techniques, if this is dry and you want to put a little bit more detail, say, in the leaves, then you can use, mix up a colour and you can then sort of paint in areas like that and overlay a different colour, a different um, colour on top of the initial glaze. That can dry in the way it, just the way it is or at this stage you can you can move it about. Don't make it too opaque. If you if you, if you have areas which are quite heavy and areas which, which are quite light, then what will happen is you'll get a, a colour that overlaps another colour and makes a third colour, which is what glazing is all about. So it really is it's up to you. The, the more pigment, the less water, the darker um, your colour is going to be. And you can use that if you want to go into details you know, kind of in the background here. You can play about with it at this stage. Um, if you keep going, 
playing about with it, you'll come to something like this. So what I've done is, as you can see, that I've used um, darker watercolour and, and overlaid it on top of the initial surface, where, where these little blue spots are in the middle of the centre, or the, the middle of the flowers, I have um, added little patches of blue. I can't emphasise enough that if you go in to try and get the accuracy of this on this, um, it's, it, it's not going to work, it's not going to, we can achieve this, we're not trying to achieve, this is an oil painting, we're not trying to achieve it. So the, the whole exercise is, is about making marks. When I'm doing brush strokes like that to put a kind of idea of darkness in amongst the leaves, I'm actually doing what I call a kind of worm, a, um, a, a worm um, movement with the paintbrush. So I, I'll, I'll load up my brush and I'll, I'll actually go like that. So it's like a kind of snake, and a snake method of, of applying the paint. And you can do that everywhere. You can, you know, you can do that. You can, you can do little marks here. Don't try and work out where the darks are and the lights are in that painting and put them into here because it, it, it won't work too much. Right, so here is a, a so-called finished underlay of um, the watercolour and here is the ink. So as I said before, um, it's called Ziller ink. It, it, this, is, this is just a recommended ink that I found and I quite like. You can get uh, water, water soluble, which will mix with water, which is the one you probably don't want right now. But you can go into one of the art shops in Glasgow and just ask them and um, get a waterproof one. I'm going to apply the lines with a paintbrush and I'm going to go down to a thinner one here. So this one is a number five, round thin brush. If you're feeling very, very adventurous, you could always use a dip pen um, with ink. So we have, we've got um, a whole host of colours down here and we and we put in quite a lot of layers. And what I want to do is I now want to take the kind of watercolour aspect away from it and apply um, a much more opaque, strong material to it so that there's a kind of contrast. And that's why I'm wanting to use um, ink. And I'm actually going to be using a, a bigger brush than you might think you would need for something that you're probably perceiving as being a very delicate thing, like watercolour is very delicate. Again, it doesn't have to be, it's, it's all about experimenting. So what I'm going to do is I am going to load up my brush and I'm just going to have a nice time. What I can do is I can, I can use a bit of, of paper here to lean my, um, my wrist on here, the side of my, uh, my hand, because if I do make a mistake with ink, it's quite difficult to remedy it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around some of these petals and put in some painted brush strokes. And I'm keeping it simple. If I put a little bit of pressure on the brush, I get a fine line. If I put a thick pressure on, I get a thick line. And again, one, you've got your, your kind of reference here, but it is only a reference. A kind of good hint when you're doing work like this is, is not to do lines that are unbroken, or too many of them. Try and identify the kind of shape, the basic shape of the flower and the colour that you've used. I 
And as you can see, if I'm doing I'm doing some kind of leaf shapes here, with a little bit sort of serrated, um, and I'm kind of re repeating repeating that shape, but not exactly. Just I can, I can change the direction of it or even the size of it, just to give a feeling of shapes. But what you will see is that this is a different um, set of marks to this different shape of leaves to here. I'm going to go into the daffodils. Again, I don't have to go, I, can, I know in the centre they've got little kind of orange bits, but I don't have to circle the whole thing, that's going to be too heavy. Just give a little indication. More leaves round about. And you can see that the detail underneath. will speak for itself and you just have to do a few lines on top, I think. But I'm going to continue with this and then show you at the end of the film the end result. So that was your lesson on watercolour techniques using ink and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.